What is going on everybody? My name is Blake Connolly. If you don't already know me, I do all types of tutorials, whether it's business, programming, sales, whatever it is. My channel is kind of all over the place and I love to do it all. So today we are diving into Hangfire. It is an event queue that is in C sharp um, .NET Core. So we're gonna show you today how to get it set up, how to start working with it. And then in another lesson, we will show you actually how to use the functionality behind it. So today is just gonna be focused on getting it implemented into your project, getting the dashboard up and running. So let's just go ahead and dive on into it. So the first step is that we're gonna to wanna to create a new project. I'm gonna close this one out and we will set up a fresh brand new project here. So we'll go to create new project. We're gonna be using a .NET Core web application. I'm just gonna name it Hangfire Setup. Cool, so we've got our new project generating. We're gonna do just a regular HTTP, a, a, API, sorry. Um, we'll go with that. And great, we're all set up. So the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do, um, you're gonna have a basic structure, just API structure here. Not much is going to change. Um, really with Hangfire, you don't have to change a lot. It's just really some uh, general startup parameters that you have to uh, get set up. So we're gonna do that now. First thing you're gonna to wanna to do is actually go to your manage NuGet packages. Um, I will throw the package name and uh, that's really all you should need in the description, but um, you'll just want to download Hangfire. Great, um, so Hangfire is here. We can go ahead and install that. Now, one thing I do wanna note is that um, I would recommend using SQL Server for this instead of MySQL. We've tried to set up, uh, we've tried to set it up with MySQL several times now. Um, and even in their uh, GitHub notes, there are mentions that MySQL does not work with the latest versions. So I would be aware of that. We've transferred all of our projects from MySQL to SQL Server uh, pretty much because of that. So definitely something to keep into account. You'll notice we just set it up here. We just installed it. They give us a readme text file here that shows you everything you need to use to get it up and running. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and follow this and implement it. Um, all of this is going to be implemented in your startup class. You can ignore all of this below here. That's not for us. Um, so we just need to add these two lines to our configure services in our startup. Okay. Great, we've added those. And we need to add this one to our configure. Great, we've added that. That's all it takes for Hangfire to get it set up somewhat. Um, you also need to you realize they have a connection string here. This is going to be your SQL Server connection string. Um, so what we're gonna do is go ahead and create a new, uh, we'll go ahead and create a new database. I believe with Hangfire, you do need to create your database before you actually run it because what happens is whenever you run the app for the first time, it will do a check to see if you already have all of the tables and database set up for Hangfire. If you don't, um, it will create the tables, not the actual database. So it's important that you create that first. So we're in our SQL Server Management Studio. Let's right click and click uh, new database. We will call this Hangfire Tutorial. Great, so that's gonna be our new database. That is all you need there. Your connection string for SQL Server will vary on how you're running it, whether you're using um, typical Windows authentication or a uh, username password based authentication. Um, I already know that that's my connection string because we've used it on other projects, so I'm just going to copy it. Uh, if you don't know how to do this, I would recommend looking up a tutorial on, uh, or looking up you know just regular connection strings for SQL Server. So our database name is Hangfire Tutorial. Um, great. So if you already have a pre-existing database, you could link it to that and it will run all the migrations in there as well. I always like to have my event queue separate from my main database just because um, I, I think they really should be independent um, and, and just in my opinion. So um, that we always keep it separate. So that's set up. So now if we run this, it should create all the migrations for us. Um, and let's just go ahead and try it. So we're going to switch from IIS to just our regular app running and we should be able to run here. We'll give it a second. You should notice there should be quite a bit of, uh, you know, log showing that everything's been installed. Yeah, here we go. So, okay, great. So our API loaded up. You'll notice a lot of the debug messages talking about hang fire, uh, processing background execution, that kind of stuff. Um, failed to authenticate HTTPS connection. Okay, that's fine. That's a SQL. That's not a SQL server. Um, that's uh, .NET Core. They recently did HTTPS. So what we should be able to see now is if we go to our browser here and we hit Hangfire, 
Yes, so that is it. Hangfire is literally set up and running. You can now see that it's showing you real time what events are being processed here. Um, your server information, you can go to jobs, see what's in your queue, retries, recurring jobs, what servers are connected. You can actually connect multiple servers to handle event processing for you. So let's quickly talk before we go on to the next um, lesson that will be after this video about what Hangfire is used for and how you can potentially use it in your application. Um, one of the biggest uses is for things that have recurring tasks. So if you have a project that needs to run a specific function or a specific uh, service method at specific intervals, you can set that up here. So you can do everything from every second, every minute, every day, hour, week, month, um, every second day of the month, whatever it is, you can set that up here um, and it'll actually run. We've used Hangfire on applications that have hundreds of thousands of events processing every day and it has not failed us at all. Um, there are definitely some design techniques that we can discuss in other videos to make sure that um, you're able to process all, process all of these events at um, you know a certain time. Sometimes we had 100 events shooting off at the same time. They were using a uh, specific interface that we had to design accordingly. But that's all architecture. That's all uh, design techniques. So we'll talk about that in another time. But you've got Hangfire set up. So our next lesson is actually going to talk about um, how you can interact with it and how you can set up a function inside of it to be called uh, based on an interval. So thank you guys for watching. Make sure to check out the next lesson on that. I think it'll be extremely interesting and Hangfire can be used in several applications. So you should definitely take a look at it. So all right, guys, I'll see you in the next one. Bye.